Okay, back on the J40, uh, and and what and what and what? So uh, I, I just uh, you know took it out of the band clamp on the back uh, uh, crack, and uh, it's got is you can feel a little bit of an edge to it, but uh, it's it's solid and well glued. I um I, I went across the bridge because uh, when I when I flattened it out as much as I did, I lost the little chamfers on top. Uh, just re reestablished those with the little countersink uh, bit, and uh, and I already went into this hole with the little pin reamer, and uh, down to about that far. And I got a new set of pins because we uh, didn't have pins because it didn't have that type of bridge. Um, I am going to mark my ream. Uh, they should all be really close. They're not handmade pins or anything. That might vary. that I have enough height here or I don't have to take any more height off of the saddle that I can leave the front of this bridge where it is. Uh, if I'm if I'm at 564ths out here I'm, I'm gonna be you know pretty satisfied with that. Uh, that's not considered high on an acoustic although even on acoustics I like to get uh, down to uh, 660 or excuse me 464ths or a sixteenth of an inch. Um, I don't even know what that means in thousands. I'd have to, I'll have to convert that at some point. Um, I know a lot of guys are really pretty happy with 564ths or even 664ths, which uh, to me just seems really kind of high, but it depends on how aggressive a player you are, how hard you strum, that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, we'll see. I am, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and put a little bit of chamfer back in these because I lost that. Uh, with the um, with the reamer taking the holes out a little bigger. see what we have here that looks pretty good looks real good um, haven't oiled this yet I'm going to do that uh, right now and then I'm going to tape off around here resand all this down and then oil that uh, double checking here we're looking really good uh, another thing I have to do is uh, saw down in front of the uh, string string holes or pig holes uh, so that uh, I mentioned this before so that the uh, string can come up and over uh, you know, have more down pressure on the saddle. Um, you come up like that and then bend over right at the hole, it's going to be bending over almost level to where the the saddle is. This this situation is kind of like, uh, you know, an old guitar 
that's been uh, the saddle's been shaved down as far as it can go because it needs a neck reset. Uh, and then the bridge is shaved down and the saddle's shaved down some more. So we're kind of just starting right out at that point. And, uh, and so uh, to, to accommodate the, the bridge change from the original style it had to, uh, to, this, to the pin style, and then also uh, to not have to, to do a neck reset. This is a thousand dollar guitar. Um, you know, so I, I don't, you know, I mean, except for, and then pretty much all of this work is being done for sentimental reasons. And uh, so I don't think it's a valuable enough guitar to recommend a three, four hundred dollar uh, neck reset, um, you know, to, to have left the uh, bridge at full thickness. So that's, we're just kind of working it out and doing the geometry the best we can and getting her back a playable guitar. So, all right. Um, all right. Uh, so, uh, did the uh, did the slots in front of the holes? Did the I didn't oil it. I taped it off and sanded it, and I thought, well, I'll oil it when I untape it. Makes more sense. Um, I may have mentioned this, but I saw saw this gal um, in the store when she gave me the strings for this guitar. I, and indicated it might be a little heavy for her. She said to go ahead and put some lighter strings on. Um, so uh, she gave me 12s. I'm, I've got a set of 11s that I'm going to put on it. That's not as light as I would go if I had 10s, but I don't. So I'm going to put the 11s on it. The set of 10s I have are, are the Ernie Ball Earthwood Rockin' Blues, and they have a non-wound G and uh, I like that. I buy those because I use them, but uh, it can it can mess up your intonation a bit. And um, uh, if you're not used to that, it might it might mess you up. I don't know. I like it. That is a really nice piece of rosewood. Much. Uh, much darker than the uh, than the board itself. I'm not even 100% sure that the board is rosewood. I'm going to uh, go ahead and oil it. I and I may have already done that. I don't. I don't recall. I'm using my uh, my very own fretboard oil, which is uh, just thinned out linseed oil. I think it might be 50 50. Um, sounds like something I would do. And the reason I would do that is so that the uh, it's thin enough that it will actually penetrate and soak into the wood some. And uh, you're, regardless, when you do a, when you thin out a, uh, a urethane or a stain or whatever, um, I know lacquer for sure, you thin that out, you still. It lays down better and then the solvent evaporates anyway and you still have that film of uh, whatever the product was on the board. So um, you might put a little extra on so that you end up after that's gone away but I think it just penetrates better. That's my story. I also have a, a little gouge that was in the top of this, wasn't a crack. Uh, she didn't ask me to, you know, do anything with it. And so what I'm going to do, rather than try to fill it, sand it out, is is uh, just uh, oil it. And that oil will darken the, the spruce up so it doesn't stand out quite so bad. Right, and give this another once around on the on the bridge, and then I'm going to go around the bridge. I don't have any Q-tips out here, so I'm just going to slop it on there and then wipe off the excess. Uh, and then I'm going to polish the whole guitar, uh, and then string it up.
So a little extra. Oops. Dribbling out here. So remember I was putting this oil around the bridge just to seal in between where the uh, the finish has been chiseled back, scratched back, sanded back, whatever. Uh, and so to make sure that if there's any any portion that uh, didn't get sealed with either the glue, um, well, didn't get sealed with the glue, then we'll get sealed with this oil. And so I am just pushing that around there. Of course, any place there's glue, the oil won't go. So I'm not it's not like I have to worry about loosening the, the bond or anything by rubbing some linseed oil on the thing. So I know you can't tell, but I can just from looking at this, uh, putting that oil around there really, really just cleans it up, makes it makes it very nice. And um, so now I'm going to wipe it all down with uh, with the polish that I use. Uh, I've, I've been recording a lot of video this weekend, and uh, I've, I don't know how many times I've mentioned Stumac, and so I think Stumac, if you guys are listening, Dan and uh, Eric, Eric, maybe he's not, well, I don't know, Eric Coleman, yeah, so Dan Earlywine, Eric Coleman, if you're listening, send me some money, man, I've been pushing your, your stuff, your product, so, um, What's the other thing? Oh, so what I'm using is the uh, uh, Stuart McDonald preservation polish. And uh, I don't know if anybody else makes something like this. And I don't know what they have in here. I know it's silicone free. And uh, that works for me. But I'll tell you, I can just wipe a guitar down with this stuff and it's pretty amazing um, how, how good it looks. Uh, kind of regardless of how bad it looked coming in, um, you wipe a guitar down with this stuff. Oh, I should have vacuumed the thing first. Oh well, I didn't vacuum it out yet. I know I'm talking about that. I just get a good coat on there. I'm gonna do a little more. I don't take any major pains with it either. I just like to get a good coat of, of this polish on there. And it's a cleaner polish, so it uh, does tend to take any crud off. Now, in places where I've, I've put water on the surface, uh, it's, you know, it could be a little, um, I don't want to say, it's um, the word I don't want to use, It look a little blushed, you know. A lot of finishes do that, but uh, in this case, it just kind of you know I was gluing stuff, and it just kind of left a little blue hazy smear, even though I rinsed it pretty good. So this will take that off. So that's, I don't get too concerned about that when I'm, and I've just rotated this to a cleaner spot on the rag, and, uh, and basically just keep going, and it. It works really well. So I'll flip it over, do the back, and I'll do the sides. Right in here where I was working on this crack, I've got some little light areas. And I think that's just glue smear, um, water and glue residue. And so we'll probably um, see that go away. And uh, those areas would go a little wetter with the product so that it has a chance to really soak in. Yeah, that all went away. All right, so I'm just going to keep going here. I'm going to turn you off. And do the sides and the neck and the big head and uh, clean it all up. I took the saddle out, I re 
uh, I, I radiused it uh, so that it's a 12 inch radius is what the board is and uh, and then I took uh, as much as I dare off the height it's uh, and then I uh, I actually took some more out of the front edge of the saddle in front of the slot uh, I came in from the ends so the ends are captured uh, and then I and then I reduced the thickness right on the very front edge there um, the truss rod had a bit of up bow in it uh, so I was able to take it down I'm I'm probably at about 10 30 seconds on uh, 10, 10 thousandths I'm having trouble with numbers uh, 10 thousandths on the relief uh, I'm, I'm still a fat five five sixty fourths on the action which um, you know like I said before is, is plenty good uh, for a lot of players I think this uh, lady is is not going to be an up-the-neck kind of uh, player anyway although it's not unplayable um, but I'm pretty sure she's going to She's going to be playing open chords uh, for the most part. I'm, I'm not sure. Can't get my hand up there because of the guitar, but grabbing the chord isn't a problem. It's, it's, it's playable. And, and the intonation, I was really surprised, is, uh, is spot on. I got a couple, uh, I'm not going to say spot on. Actually, the E through the D strings are really good. Um, uh, the A and the E are just slightly sharp, but because of the way the saddle ended up being so close to the bridge, uh, I'm not going to try to, you know, change the the lead off edge on this thing. Uh, so basically, it's just they're all coming off the front of the the front of the saddle, and the saddle's got a slight back bow or back bevel to it. So um, it's definitely close enough. Uh, that uh, you're not going to hear it. In fact, um, I don't know how to play. Anyway, I think it plays good. It sounds good. It's it's a cannon. I mean, this is a. I'm not hitting this thing hard. Seventies uh, Gibson J40, uh, previously uh, of the uh, string through persuasion, now a pin bridge, and uh, and a couple cracks. Three cracks got fixed along the way. This crack right up here got a cleat, and then uh, this little crack here wasn't open enough to worry about. Plus, got X bracing right there. Filled it with glue. Um, and fill the uh, the crack in the back also with glue. So there you have it. All right. Um, yeah, nice little guitar. Sounds good. I'd say it's a keeper. Thanks for watching, folks. Um, I'm not very good at this off the cuff stuff, so um, just want to say thanks. Thanks again for uh, all you subscribers, the support. The comments. I really, uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to, to, you know, whatever the comment might be. Even if you're questioning why I did something a certain way, uh, I just like to hear from you. Know that uh, know what you're thinking, that you're you're benefiting from these, or uh, or it's just interested. It's all good. Uh, so hey, thank you guys. Um, that's it. Take care.